So what succinctly does the rowing stroke involve? Well, here's a man you should know. A, a front-loaded, leg-driven stroke with a very strong finish. So that's how I would describe the stroke. The technique we're talking about is an effective stroke, the principles of which are length of stroke, rhythm, timing and blade work, all of which stem from a good posture. It's about moving the boat as far as possible with each stroke with minimum effort. The whole movement is relaxed and rhythmical with no beginning and no end. Legs, body, shoulders and arms all contribute to the power. And don't forget, the core muscles are the key. And these principles are exactly the same for both rowing and sculling. The critical things to look at are the stern of the boat, it has to be running level and smoothly, your blade work, and what your body does. The rowing stroke sequence can be broken down into four segments. The catch, the drive, the extraction, and the recovery. But before we go any further, let's check a fundamental, your grip. You must have the right size handle which fits into the natural arc of your hand, so you're using only the base of the fingers to grip. Think of your hands as hooks, which don't squeeze but just hook over the handle. Whether sculling or rowing, you have to be relaxed. If you're hanging on for grim death, that tension will be transferred through the arms and into the back. Just as with a tennis racket or a golf club, a relaxed grip allows you to treat the blade like an extension of your arm and really feel the water. The more relaxed you are, the more control you have. To go really fast, you need to develop an effective catch. Preparation for this starts during the recovery. The points to remember are to let the boat move under you on the recovery and to arrive at the catch in a comfortable position. The aim from there is to achieve the strongest connection from the power developed by the legs to the spoons in the water. Body posture is all important. If you saw somebody lifting weights like this, you'd step in and help or at least call the nearest osteopath. Working on flexibility and stability will help you achieve good posture. But remember, upper body movement all comes from the pelvis. That's better. In fact, there are many similarities between this power clean and the rowing stroke. Now, although a beginner rower will start at the finish learning to balance the boat, let's, like our weightlifter, begin at the catch, because this is where effective use of power and therefore speed is developed. The back is flat, the shins vertical, there is little distance between the thighs and body, and your weight is on the balls of your feet. You should have freedom to breathe and get the most power from the legs. The feeling is that of being like a coiled spring. The spoon should be square as you approach front stops. Place them in the water to where you reach with a small vertical movement of the arms. Keep the arms straight and stay relaxed. Only when the spoons are fully submerged are they locked on and ready for the drive phase. The body angle stays the same. If performed correctly, the stern remains level and the seat should be stationary for a minimum amount of time. If you take nothing else away from this program, just remember that the drive begins with the legs pushing off the stretcher and your body weight remains suspended on the handle right through the drive. Effectively, the spoons stay still and you use the legs to lever the boat past them. Start driving the legs without changing the upper body position. Just as you straighten your legs with the handles level with your knees, open up your back and draw in your arms. If you're sculling, make sure the left hand is slightly above the right when the handles overlap. Towards the end of the drive, gradually draw the arms into your body. Keep the elbows higher than your wrists. The aim is to keep the blades square for as long as possible and extract them square from the water as your thumbs touch your lycra shirt. At this point, your shoulders should be just behind your hips and your weight still suspended on the handle. Push the handle down so the spoons pop up. The key point here is to keep the hands moving at the same speed throughout the whole move. When the spoons are fully extracted, use your thumbs to start rolling the blades onto the feather. 
Release your fingers in a smooth, flowing action and keep your wrist as flat as possible. The recovery phase is your preparation for the next stroke. It's all about organising your movements to minimise loss of speed. The momentum you've created continues to move the boat forward and the key is relaxation. The more relaxed you are, the more oxygenated blood can get to your muscles. The arms move smoothly away first with the spoon clear of the water and when they're almost straight, the body pivots forward from the pelvis in a comfortable and strong position which is maintained throughout the recovery. Your weight is now on your feet. Keep it there. You should feel your legs come up to touch the body, not the other way round. Once the hands are past the knees, start squaring the blades in preparation for the next catch. Remember, last in, first out. So use your legs last on the recovery and then first on the drive. Let's look at the whole thing in action. Here's Tim coaching Matt Langridge. Matt here normally has a very good pick up at the front. One of the reasons why he is a very fast sculler. The way he puts his spoons in at the front is very efficient, making full use of his reach. There's no point having long limbs if you don't use them and put the spoons into the water. So it's quite a relaxed pick up. There's no extra effort in there. It's a really nice demonstration of how his spoons go into the water. There's no effort, there's no energy in that placement. The shoulders are okay, they're a little bit hunched, but nice and relaxed. The posture in the lumbar spine could be a little bit better, could be sitting up stronger to help transfer the power he's producing with his legs. But actually looking at his blade work, the entry of the spoons at the front ends, that's really nice. It's tough at the top. Former junior world champion and still he's got room for improvement. But such is the wonder of rowing, there's always another level to aspire to. The principles of rowing and sculling, good posture, long rhythmic strokes etc are the same, but there are differences. Let's have a look at world Olympic champion Steve Trapmore in slow motion. The main difference is that the trunk rotates. The outside shoulder follows the arc of the end of the handle. The outside hand controls the draw of the handle, whilst the inside hand is responsible for feathering. The most successful athletes are those who do the basics best. Here's where Jürgen sees the basics of rowing being most commonly misunderstood. I think one of the mistakes is, and you can see it, is, is really the coordination when they bring the blade in some of them, they're just starting pulling uh, with their arms because they think, oh, that's is quite, because they have a little bit of fe better feeling in the first moment if they put the blade in and bending the arms, but then at the same time the legs are not driving, so they get a little bit of, in a conflict in the middle part of the stroke because the legs are still really bended, not, haven't done any work. And it's very hard to get the basics right when you're exhausted. Fitness training can be done away from the boat, so use your water sessions to improve your technique, not your fitness. The better you get, the longer you can train on the water. <laughs> 